Case 1. History of the Canadian Penal Press The Canadian Penal Press came about as a result of the 1938 Archambault Report, which recommended a number of reforms for the Canadian penitentiary system with an emphasis on rehabilitation. The first of the newsletters to be published was the KP Telescope on September 1, 1950, from Kingston Penitentiary, or KP as it is known. KP opened in 1835 and in 1842 was visited by Charles Dickens, who wrote about it in American Notes, saying, quote, There is an admirable jail here, well and wisely governed and excellently regulated in every respect. The men were employed as shoemakers, rope makers, blacksmiths, tailors, carpenters, and stone cutters, and in building a new prison, which was pretty far advanced towards completion, the female prisoners were occupied in needlework. End quote. Included in this case are the first three publications of the KP Telescope, open to pages of endorsement from Commissioner Gibson and Deputy Commissioner Joseph McCulley, who comments that, quote, O. Henry, the famous short story writer, began his literary career within a prison. There is no reason why this publication might not also become a medium for the expression of similar talent, end quote. Perhaps the administration saw the newsletters as a way of promoting and proving to the public that the new reforms suggested by the Archambault Report were working. These professional-looking publications, with their intelligent and hard-hitting stories, presented a different face of prisons to the public. Publications soon appeared from the other parts of the country, including the Pathfinder from Prince Albert Penitentiary in Saskatchewan, Transition from British Columbia Penitentiary, Panorama from St. Vincent de Paul in Quebec, the Beacon from Dorchester Prison in New Brunswick, and Mountain Echoes from Manitoba Penitentiary. Figuring prominently in the case is a photo from 1890, on loan from the Queen's Archives, that depicts the dome in Kingston Penitentiary. This is suggestive of Jeremy Bentham's Panopticon. Also included in this case is a 1962 policy directive that lists the purpose of the publications, the publishing standards, and the role of the editorial committee. By 1968, all of the newsletters in this case had ceased production.